Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is 14 hospital systems to sell their data. Now, this topic comes from Andrew Surio, so thank you so much, Andrew, for pointing this out to me. So, it was recently announced that there is a new organization called Truveta, which is going to be a combination of, it's a joint venture. For, between the largest, some of the largest hospital systems in America, some of which are Common Spirit, Providence, Tenant, many other very well-known hospital systems, they comprise 13% of all hospitals in America. And they're going to, with this new organization, this new joint venture, they are going to aggregate de-identified clinical patient data like, I don't even want to put a number on it. It is a huge amount of data. And what are they going to do with this data? They're going to sell it. This is a for-profit entity. What are they going to do? They are going to sell it to, they imagine pharmaceutical companies would want to buy this data. They imagine insurance companies would want to buy this data. They imagine technology companies would want to buy this data. So. This then got me thinking, okay, what kind of questions would I want to answer with this data? And one of the things that is very true about healthcare is that there's just a high degree of variability. Say, well, is quality good or is it bad? Well, it's variable. Is cost high or is it low? Well, it's just variable. And things like mortality rates are variable, readmission rates are variable, length of stay is variable, the operating rates of a surgeon is variable in terms of like, do they actually do a hip replacement or a gallbladder surgery? Complication rates are highly variable. Like, it's variable. And why is it variable? Because healthcare is a services business. And services, by definition, are almost always highly variable. As I've talked about in other Hey Healthcare Z videos. Now, how are they var uh, variable? They're variable by hospital, okay? Are there different mortality and readmission rates like state by hospital? by hospital floor or nursing unit? Are they variable by the specific doctor, Dr. Brown versus Dr. Jones versus Dr. Smith? Or by the surgeon in the operating room? So you could use the Truveta data to actually look at the service variability by hospital, by floor, by doctor, etc. So you could get down to the very granular level in terms of that variability. And I can tell you already right now what the data is going to look like. It's going to look like this graph which is a bell-shaped distribution histogram, where on the y-axis, you would have like the, hosp the, the hospital, the floor, the doctor, or the surgeon, right? The number of them, so the number of hospitals. And then you would have the mortality rate, the readmission rate, the length of stay, the complication on the x-axis. So, and it would have like, there'd be some sort of like, Medi middle amount, let's say mortality rate, let's just say like 10%, right? And you'd have some of the, of the, there'd be a, the largest number that would be in the middle there. And then you'd have a smaller number that had a very low mortality rate. And then you would have a very small number that would have a very high mortality rate. Okay. So likewise, for readmission rates, you would have a small number of folks that had very low readmission rates. You'd have a whole bunch of folks that had like medium readmission rates. And then you'd have a small number of folks that had very high readmission rates. Okay. So, and we already know from things like the Dartmouth Atlas how variable things are, right? So you're 40% more likely to get a joint replacement in Fort Lauderdale than you are in Los Angeles per the Dartmouth Atlas. Also per the Dartmouth Atlas, you're 42% more likely to get a joint replacement surgery in one particular suburb of DFW, Dallas-Fort Worth, versus another suburb of Dallas-Fort Worth. So in other words, it's variable across the country. It's also variable within metropolitan areas. And then ProPublica, with its surgeon scorecard, they went even more granular and they said, look, by specific surgeon, and they found that the complication rate at one particular hospital was two times higher with one surgeon than with another surgeon. And this was all just with Medicare claims data. So imagine if you had data for Medicare, Medicaid, commercial insurance, self-pay, which, oh, by the way, Trivet is going to have. And then, like, 
This is only for joint replacements and a handful of surgeries. You could do it for pneumonia. You could do it for emphysema. You could do it for congestive heart failure. You could do it for skin infections. You could do it for gallbladder surgery. You could do it for kids. You could literally do it for every single clinical situation that exists. Wow. Now that is some powerful data. Now, why would we want to do this? Because you want to identify the outliers. Okay, so there's a small number of people that have high complication rates. There's a small number of hospitals that have high mortality rates. There's a small number of um, hospitals that have high readmission rates. There's a small number of doctors that have high readmission rates. Small number of doctors that have high re long length of stay. And so the question becomes, okay, well, why? So there are outliers. You want to know who these outliers are. And the next question is, is why? And of course, the classic thing in healthcare is, is oh, well, because our patients are sicker. Okay, like, and that might be true or it might not. There might be another reason why one particular doctor has a higher mortality rate than another, or why they have a longer length of stay than another doctor, or why they have more readmissions than another doctor, okay? So, um, the question is, who's gonna buy this? Who would buy that information? Like, arguably, that's a public good. Like, we in the public would want to know, like, which of these hospitals are, which of these doctors there are, which of these floors, these like, we would want to know. It's like a public good, right? Okay, so would the government pay Truveta for that data so that the government could display it as like an issue of public safety and patient safety? Okay, also, like, if Truveta has the data to do this and doesn't do this, then what does that say? If they have the capability for the insights on patient safety and variability in quality, if they have the ability to analyze this and then don't, if they don't take advantage of this, what does that mean? Okay, so an insurance company would certainly want to know this information as well to be able to give it to their members. And, you know, at the end of the day, the government giving, the government gives money to hospitals for data already. They do it with Medicare. And it's not a quid pro quo thing. They're like, okay, hospitals, if we're going to pay you for Medicare, then you've got to, you know, give us, you know, data. Okay, that's fine. So the United States government has given hospitals a ton of money because of COVID and has asked for nothing in return. Well, if, you know, hospitals are in dire financial situation and if the government's going to give more money to hospitals in the future, maybe the government should be like, oh, let's just do what Truvet is doing and we'll, you know, you listen, just collect the data that Truvet is collecting. And we'll pay, you, we'll pay you for it. We'll give you this, this government grant or this subsidy, and you've got to give me the data. Now, of course, they could also just be like, you have to give us the data in order for us to continue paying you Medicare. Like, I don't know if they're going to use the carrot or the stick. But the point is, is that there are some highly significant questions that could be answered as it relates to patient uh, safety and variability that could be answered by Truveta. And we'll see what happens. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.